information is there. Uh, we don't think the world is a pancake, uh, but it isn't perfectly uh, isotropic 3D representation either. And our memory of a scene, like railroad tracks, will preserve the way the laws of optics and projection made it appear to us at the time. That was my thesis. I later explored it in a study on visual attention with a graduate student at the time named Catherine Downing. Looked at the ability of the brain to shift a mental spotlight, separate from actually rotating your eyeballs in your skull. A mental spotlight, again, was a cognitive or mentalistic entity par excellence. First, the hypothetical ability that we have to process different parts of the visual field. Now, this is separate from moving your eyeballs, which uh, the purpose of which really is to bring uh, parts of the visual field into the highest resolution, finest detail part of the eyeball, namely the fovea dead center. Most people aren't even aware that outside of the dead center of vision, uh, you can't see uh, hardly any detail. Hold out a, a hand even a, a few degrees away from where you're looking, you can't even count the fingers. There's a great illusion that we have as we explore the world. Our eyes dart all over the place. Anytime we need to read something or see a detail, we just rotate the eyeballs so that the fovea is uh, centered on it and we get all the detail we want. And that gives us the illusion that we're living in this rich visual world, whereas in fact, we see very little detail except for what we're dead center looking at. Hate to interrupt. Wouldn't you prefer uninterrupted indulgence? Head to findqualia.com to access the entire series by the genius Steven Pinker, completely ad-free. But separate from the ability to rotate the, those, uh, the eyeballs, we also, even with it, when our eyes are fixed, our mind's eye, if you will, uh, can pay attention to different parts of the visual field. That's what, say, athletes use, basketball players, uh, when they don't want to telegraph uh, where they're going to pass, they pay attention to a teammate out of the corner of their eye, but avoid looking at them because that will give away to the defender where they're going to pass the ball. Well, you can study that in, in a lab by having an array of lights where you signal to people which one they should be attending to. While their eyes are uh, dead ahead, you can measure their eye movements with electrodes to make sure that they're obeying the instructions. And then they've got to press a button when a light anywhere in the visual field lights up. What we found was the farther away the actual event was from where the mental spotlight was fixed, the longer it would take people. And it depended on visual angle. That is, two objects this far away took the same amount of time as two objects that were farther apart in physical space if they were also at a greater depth, but that projected along the same lines of sight. And if they were at different depths, then there would be a, a cost. That is, if, if you were attending here, you were slower if the light illuminated over there or vice versa. So it was a kind of experimental uh, corroboration of this abstract concept of the two and a half dimensional sketch, which Marr had proposed. And the theory was that our visual attention can be allocated within this two and a half D representation. And that's where imagery takes place as well. That in Ordinary perception, uh, recognition, which works from the bottom up. We see something, goes from the uh, eyeball to the 2.5D sketch in the brain, and then it gets analyzed into what it means, what it consists of, whose face it is, what you're looking at. In imagery, it's similar, except the information goes from the top down to, instead of from the bottom up. Namely, you start off knowing what you want to imagine, Mickey Mouse, frozen broccoli, an elevator, and the information gets fed back downward into this uh, mid-level visual representation. That was a, a modification of the uh, Steve Costland's theory of imagery and the subject of my PhD thesis.